Today's video is sponsored on Patreon by Daniel Stewart. Mahardi versus Phoenix with three lands available to us. A sack outlet, some removal. Yeah, we can try that. Ponder from Phoenix. Okay, draw into Plum the Forbidden. Let's just get out a tap land down the Basilisk Collar this turn, I think. Then a chart the course, draw two, and then discard. Okay, an Arcane Signet, I think. I was going to go for the Woe Strider, but... Yeah, maybe we can go Woe Strider this turn and then play Arcane Signet and equip this to it. Start dealing damage to our opponent sooner. Drudge Skeletons from our opponent. And they can reanimate that. Uh, we'll still gain the life from the Basilisk Collar, though. It's noteworthy with our commander that this, with Regenerate, isn't destroyed and then brought back. It is simply left in play and tapped. It is a replacement effect on the uh, on the death. So uh, not going to trigger our Mahadi. There is a Plague Wind. A million miles away from that. So get down the Arcane Signet. Equip the Basilisk Collar. Probably going for our commander next turn. So blocking with the Drudge Skeletons and paying for the Regeneration Shield on it. Okay, Dread Return being cast already. Uh, they go for Torgar. Don't really fancy going for a Feed the Swarm on that, but we might have to. So our life total goes down to half. So knocking us all the way down to 20. A land here would be really good, so we can get down our commander and go for Feed the Swarm. Either that or another piece of spot removal. <laughs> Alright, Ancient Tomb. We're going to be making use of Basilisk Collar this game, I think. So in comes Mahardi. Followed by Feed the Swarm. is going to lose us 8 life. And then we can gain some more life from the Woe Strider. Making a treasure token at the end of the turn because one of our opponent's creatures did die. Should point out actually, this is actually, I've actually built this as a multiplayer deck, but <laughs> uh, I'm not having the best of luck getting multiplayer games that are actually um, complete and without people scooping and stuff and bringing two card combos that win on turn four and stuff like that, so... I'm just trying it in the 1v1 room to try and get this commander out to you as soon as possible because I am away the week that you are seeing this. So it might not go as well as it would do if I'd actually built it for 1v1. A soul exchange. Return it to... <laughs> so they are reanimating it once again. Might have to go for Plum the Forbidden then. Uh, yeah, so we'll go down to 6 here. Let's... I don't know if it matters. Let's go plumb the Forbidden and we'll make another treasure token. That's only at the end of our turn though, isn't it? Yeah, it's at the beginning of your end step, so... Eh, whatever. We'll go for plumb the Forbidden. Sacrifice Woe Strider and the Goat to that. So we're going to lose three life. And draw three cards. And then we'll go down to five. Wow, they've got everything, haven't they? That is a counter spell, so we do get the two copies still. Uh, they'll only go for the counter on the original. Plum the Forbidden is still worth doing here. Okay, there we see a Marionette Master and a Yorg Moth. Uh, and we jumped up to 20 there. Why did that happen? Oh, it's half of the starting life toll, not just half of your life. Alright, fair enough. Misread that card. Alright, getting into a land is really good here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Couple of mana away from Plague Wind. Probably best to get out the Woe Strider here. Cost us five, so maybe reanimate that. And we were milled by the counter spell as well, so we've lost Vona's Hunger, Nadia's Nightblade, and Wooded Foothills. Um, so they've actually helped us with the escape there. So in that case, let's go for Basilisk Collar onto the Mahadi. If they want to swing this in at us, thinking that we're not going to block then we can block with that, gain a bit of life, and get rid of this thing. And then we've still got enough to um, escape the Woe Strider. We can reanimate our commander to cheat commander cost. So we'll play out the Org Moth this turn. Our opponent going straight through to attack, so I assume that they're going to go straight in with the Torgar. Okay, deciding not to swing in at us, I'm fine either way. A Demon's Disciple, that is a nice way to get rid of the Torgar, so we'll see if our opponent can you know we'll see if they can counter that i'm just wondering if we reanimate if they can yeah we're not doing anything for four mana so not much point in tapping down the ancient tomb i don't think go for the demon's disciple Let's see if they've got any counter magic three cards in hand <laughs> of course they do 
void shatter, and annoyingly that exiles it. So, we'll just have to allow that, because there's nothing else we can do. Okay, how's about reanimate onto the woe strider then? That'll get us a chump blocker. <laughs> okay, we're exhausting their resources at least. Arcane Denial onto the reanimate. We haven't escaped it yet. We can do that next turn. And all this is counter magic that's not going on Marionette Master, which we could win with at some point. So we'll just have to pass it over again. Our opponent draws a card to the Arcane Denial. We will draw two here. All right, that is a tap land and a Sol Ring as well. Okay, feed the swarm of their own going on to our commander. So might as well sacrifice that, return it to the command zone. Okay, that is a Fell Stinger. So drawing into this stuff a bit too late. It's been a pretty slow game for us so far. And then a Thirst for Knowledge. Draw three, discard two, unless you discard an artifact. Swinging in at us for six damage from the Torgar. So we just take the damage there, don't want to lose the Yorg Moth. Okay, and now getting into the lands, or the mana even. So Talisman of Indulgence, drop a land, uh, play the Sol Ring. That takes us into the Talisman. And then we can play out the Woe Strider here as well by escaping it. Going to exile all the instants and sorceries here because blue players can sometimes cash your stuff from the bin. And we've got no need for it once it's in there. So now we can actually block this thing quite profitably because it is 5 toughness here and 5 power here thanks to the Yorgmoth. So let's go for a Basilisk Collar onto Yorgmoth and we can swing in with that this turn. Tapping out a lot of mana into something. Ah, Shieldred Whispering 1, not as good. While well, we've got a creature token in play. Might be worth a Plague Wind next turn if we can... I don't think we can go for our commander and Plague Wind, unfortunately. What are they looking to reanimate here? They actually don't have anything to reanimate at all. Maybe they can discard something at instant speed. Only one card in hand though, so I doubt it. Maybe an Entomb in their hand or something. So deciding not to swing in with this because we can block with Wild Strider. So we have to sacrifice a creature to the Shieldred, of course. It will have to be the Goat token. Alright, a Rakdos Charm. Uh, exiling a player's graveyard is probably the best against Shieldred. Right, so let's go for the Fell Stinger here. And we will see if we draw into anything that's worth doing above our commander. Exploit will have us sacrifice the Fell Stinger itself. We lose two life and draw two cards. Okay, and Ashnod's Altar do draw into a Reliquary Tower, so we've got a land for the turn. Problem is, our opponent's got Swamp Walk on the Shieldred here, so which mana do we have? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So maybe it just has to be Plague Wind, unfortunately, without our commander in play. Would have been making a couple of treasures there, of course, and then. I think we can risk our opponent not having haste. Let's try and gain some life back. Passing it straight over to us with seven mana held up. We have three swamps in play. So Cabal Coffer's not as good as it could be. We'll certainly go for getting down our commander again here, I think. And then unfortunately, I think it might have to be Marionette Master and making some servos to feed into the Yorgmoth. But then we can't hold up the Rakdos Charm, and I do want to re-equip the Basilisk Collar onto this to gain more life as well, so... Yeah, we'll go for the re-equip onto the Woe Strider. Be worth seeing if our opponent does have a Rift. Would pretty much sum up this game so far, they've had an answer to everything else. Maybe a Flash Creature they can put in the way of us. Okay, it is an Aetherize. Return all attacking creatures to opponent's hand. Okay. Woe Strider is easy enough to get out again, although it will be weaker. Oh, we actually have four swamps. I didn't count this, I don't think so. Four mana from the Cabal Coffers actually nets us mana. So we'll get out the Woe Strider here. Makes us another goat token. Equip the Basilisk Collar to the Woe Strider. And we're holding up Rakdos Charm because I definitely want the Graveyard Exile. Not doing too well making treasures with my commander here, which is the whole point of the deck, of course. Erebos Bleak Hearted. And now if they're going to counter us with the last card in their hand, I'd rather they do it on their own turn. So we'll go for the exile on their graveyard now. I imagine they cast any counter magic they have against us trying to exile their bin. Well, they allow it to happen. We draw into a swamp for the turn, making our Cabal Coffers better. Uh, the last card in their hand 
could be something decent. Yeah, let's just go for the Yorg Moth now. Just in case we need to sacrifice anything and make use of card draw. Accidentally swung in with the goat token there, actually. But we do gain a bit more life, which is apparently going to be relevant this game. And then we'll make five mana from the Cabal Coffers. Go for Marionette Master here. And a rare occasion, I am actually going to make the Servo Tokens. Because typically, for those of you who don't know, the more common treasures get, the more relevant this is. But you'd usually put the plus counters on this to buff it, and then every time you crack a treasure, your opponent loses a lot of life. Play out the Ashnod's Altar as well. Unfortunately, Mahadi doesn't trigger on tokens dying, otherwise it would be a lot easier. We do have reoccurring stuff, like reassembling skeletons and blood gas and stuff, but yeah, not drawn into them, obviously. Phoenix, God of Deception, finally coming into play. We draw into a land, we'll save that. Let's go straight through to combat before we do anything else. Gain ourselves 3 life from the Basilisk Collar again. So our opponent gets knocked down to 10. We can go after the Yorgmoth here and draw some cards. Sacrifice the Marionette Master so that we'll actually start to get some treasure tokens from our commander. Alright, a Pitiless Plunderer, excellent. Definitely get that out. So we'll play that Swamp so that we can maximise the mana we get from Cabal Coffers. Maybe should have waited, we might draw into Bloodgast. But we're going to make treasure tokens one way or another, apparently. Pitiless Plunderer entering the fray. And unlike our commander, Pitiless Plunderer does trigger on tokens. So maybe shouldn't have uh, blown up the Marionette Master, but that's hindsight for you. Okay, a Gadrak as well. Not going to play into a board wipe here, we'll leave the Gadrak in hand. Sacrificing a Servo token this time, we'll probably sacrifice all of those. Alright, a Crowded Crypt, I will get into play. That does trigger on any creature as well. So we get a treasure, we get a counter on the Crowded Crypt, which will be able to give us a bit of Wrath Protection. Alright, making some good draws here. Pawn of Ulamog, another engine piece. Not going to play into a board wipe like I said, so we'll leave that in hand as well. And a Phyrexian Altar. We've already got Ashnod's Altar as well as the Yorg Moth, so no need to play anything here. I think we just pass. Mahadi going to trigger. I think it only gives us one treasure here. Oh, Mahadi does trigger on tokens. Alright, so we actually got a whole bunch of tokens there. Alright. Yeah, I could have sworn this was non-token, but apparently not. No wonder I put all this token stuff in here. It's not worthy that if I had actually left the Marionette Master in play, I could have gone for sacrificing some treasures here and uh, actually won the game there. Okay, a Kjeldoran dead. Enters the battlefield, sack a creature, regenerate it. That does trigger on itself, so they do have to sacrifice it. Can maybe do something in response, probably just going after the Arabos here. Pay two life, draw a card when it dies. So of course they sacrifice it to itself. Arabos is going to knock them down to eight. If they decide to draw, which they probably should, they die either way next turn. And our opponent decides to scoop it there. Yeah, that's fair enough if they haven't drawn into anything. Uh, we were getting into uh, Jadar. So yeah, made some really good draws in the last turn or two there. Uh, it was pretty sketchy apart from that, but got a rough idea of what we want to do with this deck. If you want to see more from it, then be sure to let me know. I'm Travel Kai. Thank you for watching.